Hey everyone, this is Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Thank you so much for coming and uh, for hanging out on my channel. If you enjoy it, please subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Today we're talking about adding and subtracting polynomials. Well, actually, let's first count fruit. If I asked you, look at all this fruit, and yes, I have drawn all of this fruit myself. Don't laugh. I'm not an artist, but I did my best. If I asked you, count the fruit we have, you would kind of look at me and probably roll your eyes and be like, okay, whatever. And then you would humor me and you would start counting fruit, right? So you'd be like, um, there are three bananas. You'd be like, okay, three bananas. And uh, there are two oranges and there'd be one apple. And you'd be like, what is that? And I'm like, of course, it's a blueberry one blueberry and these other things that who knows what they are they're strawberries one two three four there are four of them right so that's what you would say and then i would go even further and I'd be okay let's write this out you know you just counted all the fruit we had uh let's write it out so we had one blueberry so we're gonna put one here i mean <laughs> one banana not blueberry i still have blueberry that was hard to draw blueberry have you ever tried to draw blueberry if you have, let me know in the comments. I'd love to see how it went. We don't even have one banana. What in the world? We have one blueberry. We have three bananas. And now you've totally lost all faith in me, but it's okay. Let's keep going. So we have three bananas. We've got two oranges. So you'd write two oranges here. And uh, we've got one apple. So I'm going to put one right here. Awesome, and this plus, and then we have the dot, dot, dot. That just means um, continuing. So we're going to keep going on the second line. And how many blueberries? Well, we just have one of them. One blueberry. Lonely blueberry. And strawberries, we have four. So you would you would do that. And I, I, if I had asked you, uh, why didn't you add the apple with the bananas and get three plus one is four? And you'd be like, because they're not the same fruit. You asked me to count how many different kinds of fruit I had. And I'd be like, oh, okay, right, sorry. Uh, well, why didn't you add the strawberries with the apple? They both are red and have green things on top. And you're like, because they're not the same fruit. And maybe you'd be even frustrated with me. But I'm telling you, this is nothing different. This is not any different than adding and subtracting polynomials. You're really just counting fruit. I asked you to count the fruit. You counted the fruit and told me how many you had. Why didn't you add the apple and the oranges? Because they're different fruit. So what if I did something to you here? What if I'm like, um, let's get rid of all these letters except for the S. Uh, and S will stand for strawberry. Let's get rid of all these letters except for BL. And BL stands for, let me make that look like an L. BL stands for blueberry. So we have one BL. How about apples? What if we just get rid of everything but the A and oranges? Let's get rid of everything but the O. So we have, that's an O, not 20. That's two O. And then three B. So B for bananas. This kind of looks like a polynomial, right? We have uh, 3b plus 2o plus 1a plus 1bl plus 4s. There you go. It's actually a polynomial right there. So we don't add together the 3b and the 4s because they're not the same fruit. And you're like, well, wait a second. b and bl, those kind of look the same, right? The b has a b in it. It just has that extra l. Can we add those? Nope. They're not the same fruit. Bananas and blueberries are not the same fruit. doesn't matter how close they are. They're not the same. So if you guys have this concept, you're good to go. You, you totally will rock this, this concept. So if we add and subtract polynomials, it's just like counting fruit. We can only combine together terms that are like terms. And like terms must have two, must satisfy two conditions. The term must have the same variables variable or variables if they're more than one 
and those variables have to have the same exponents. So let's see if we can distinguish like from not like terms. So A, um, 5x and 2x cubed. Our two categories are variables. They both have an x here, so that works. Check that box. Um, do the variables have the same exponent? Nope, they don't, because this one has a 1 for the exponent, and this one has a 3. They're not the same. Not the same fruit. So we would say, nope, those are not like terms. Not the same fruit. How about the next one? Uh, one, we have x, and we have an x in the other one, but this second term has a y, and the first one doesn't. Not the same fruit. Can't add those two together, even if we wanted to. Next one, x, x, they both have x, so check the variable category. And they both have two as their exponent. We have a winner, winner chicken dinner. They both have the same variable with the same exponent. These are like terms. So we have three apples, we have negative four apples, or we take four away, so that means we're in the whole one. So yeah, we can, we can totally add those together because they're like terms. The next one, x squared y. So we have an x and y here, we have an x and y there. The x has a two as the exponent good and the y has a 1 perfect same fruit we could add those because those are like terms so now you're experts at identifying like terms let's add we have four different examples here so let's add these polynomials together and then you guys should be certified graduates of the fruit academy uh, let's see, our first one, A, we have 3x cubed minus 9x squared plus x minus 5. That's the first polynomial. And we're subtracting um, the polynomial 4x cubed minus 5x plus 10. I think the biggest thing, the biggest issue I see with students, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. The biggest issue that I see with students when they're doing this is uh, that they don't distribute this negative through the second one. That's super important. You've got to make sure that negative is distributed through each of the terms. And then after that, you're just adding. You're just combining like terms. So let's do that. If we did that, then the first one would be a negative. The 4x cubed would go negative. The negative 5x would go positive. And the 10x, or sorry, the 10 at the end would become um, negative. Let's do it right there. Negative 10. And... I'm going to put a plus in the middle so you know that we changed the sign. So now we're just come, we're just looking at the fruit and saying, hey, let's collect all the bananas, right? So we have 13x cubed here. Do we have any x cubed? We do. We have uh, negative 4x cubed. So we have 13 minus 4 gives us 9x cubed. So we have 9x cubed. How about x squared? We've got... Uh, one x, one, a negative 9x squared in the left polynomial, but in the right one, we don't have it. So we just keep negative 9x squared. How about the x's? We've got an x in the left and an x in the right. We've got a negative 5, or sorry, positive 5x in the right one and positive 1x. So it gives us 6x. And then we have negative 5 and negative 10, which is negative 15. That's it. You just subtracted these two polynomials. Really isn't super terrible as long as you have the fruit concept down. Let's do our next one. Uh, we've got two polynomials. We have 5xy plus 3x minus y. So here we have more than one variable, but it's okay. We know how to handle that. And the second one is negative 10xy plus 4x minus y squared. And we're adding these two. So because we're adding them, we don't need to do any type of distribution distributing we literally just look we combine like terms so we have an xy term in the left an xy term in the right 5 minus 10 is negative 5 so we have negative 5 x y um, we have a negative we have a positive 3x in the left and a positive 4x that gives us positive 7x and a negative y we don't have any just y's in the right, so we have negative y just hanging out. And in the right term, we have the negative, we have the y squared term that we don't have in the left, so can't combine that with anything else either. And we're done. 
wasn't too too terrible, right? Let's do example C. Um, again, we need this is a we're subtracting two, so we need to make sure that we are distributing that negative through all of the terms. Let's do it right now. So I'm going to make that a plus. This becomes a negative. So there are four terms in the second one, and um, we have originally we have x to the fourth and positive four x squared and negative three x y and x, and we're changing the signs of all of those. So we now have negative x to the fourth, negative x, four x squared, positive three xy, and negative x. And our first polynomial is negative two x to the fourth plus three x squared plus two xy. Now we can, now we distributed, we can now combine like terms. We have an x to the fourth in the bo in both of the polynomials. So we have negative two on the left and negative one on the right. So it gives us negative three x to the fourth. As far as the x squareds go, we've got a we've got three on the left and negative four on the right. So it gives me a negative x squared. X y terms we've got two on the left and three on the right. So that gives us five total. And that's it for the left. And so on the right, we have an x that's still there, a negative x, actually. And we're done. Done. Not too bad, huh? Here's our last one. This is example d. And we have three polynomials we're adding together. We have the polynomial 5x squared minus 7x plus 8. And then we're adding that to... 2x squared minus 3x plus 7. And then we're subtracting the polynomial x squared minus 4x minus 3. So there's nothing new here. We distribute the negative. We'll make that a first term changes sign to a negative. Second term becomes positive, And the third term becomes positive. So we've distribute the negative now and we do nothing but combine like terms so not not hard it kind of it might look like it's a little difficult but it really isn't so we have x squared terms in all of these three so we have five in the first two in the second and we take away one and then we have negative one in the third so that gives us five seven and then take one away six 6x squared, and then we have, where's the x term in each? We have negative 7 in the first, negative 3, which gives us negative 10, and uh, then positive 4. So negative 10 and positive 4 give us negative 6. And then the constant terms, we have 8 and 7, which is 15, and 3, which is 18. And we are done. That's it. Hopefully this was, this was helpful. Um, thanks for watching and enjoy your day.